Who here hasn't been to space? Why? <laughs> you better not throw up on my ship. Approaching jump in three, two, one. So let's move into all the reviews for Quantum Mania. All right. Let's see here. So we've talked about Quantum Mania, obviously, uh, quite a bit since uh, it's now what next week, next Thursday is when we get to see Quantum Mania. But this morning, as I said last night, once we were talking about you know the red carpet event and things like that, we said that reviews were going to come out probably around midnight. People were going to start talking about it then, and then from there we would discuss those reviews today. Reviews have been mixed from what I've seen. There have been some people that have really enjoyed what they've watched. There have been other people that have been kind of mixed on what they've watched. But the overall consensus that Kang is great in the film has been the same. Uh, for some people, not for everyone, but for some people, uh, for most people, that's what it's been. Uh, uh, but I will go ahead and read some of these, some of the uh, reviews here that are coming out from some people. And then I'm going to get into what Josh over at the Den of Nerds had to say about what he's heard from personally from uh, people and insiders personally connected behind the scenes at Marvel themselves connected to this film and what they've had to say about it. And it's quite, quite fucking interesting. Uh, now, this first this first one that we're going to get into comes from Eric Davis, where he says, Phase 5 has begun. The new Ant-Man movie is like a psychedelic roller coaster full of frightening and hilarious uh, hilarious oddities, uh, plus one very menacing Kang. Big Star Wars vibes meets the MCU in its, and its freakiest and most um, inventive. This says, Modoc is a riot, but Jonathan Majors conquers. Love the ride. Then he goes on to say, definitely make sure you stay for the post credit scenes because they are significant things too. I really dug how Ant-Man the Quantumania, uh, Ant-Man, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania is both a part one of Phase 5, but also a self-contained Ant-Man story that's funny and sweet and features a kick-ass Michelle Pfeiffer good stuff. Then we got one from Adam, the Adam Review, that says, review. Scary and shocking game changer. Marvel is back with fun, wild adventure. This isn't just another superhero movie. It's one of the best sci-fi films ever. Wow, a fitting ending, a fitting end to to her journey while also setting up what's next. And another one here from FICO that said Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania is one of the, is the best of the trilogy. Higher stakes, danger, and repercussions. It's all. It also got one of the best MCU villains in Kang. As soon as Jonathan Majors comes in, it's his show. Kang is a scary, lean, mean, multiverse big baddie. Also, two cool post-credit scenes. Uh, then Anthony from the movie podcast said, "Quantum Mania should have sparked or should have sparked Phase Five with a bang, but it misses the mark." The story is plagued with filler, uh, while suffocate while while uh, significant. I'm sorry, sorry. Let me start that over. The story is plagued with filler, while sufficient lacks lacks depth. However, Majors does give an outstanding performance as the cunning and ruthless Kang. I wish it had left an impression. See that again. Mixed reviews. Mixed reviews coming from some people. Where this one, where the review before that said higher stakes. He went on to say uh, filler and plagued with uh, sufficient, uh, I'm sorry, while sufficient lacks depth. Uh, you know, so and then I'm mean, gonna get to the stakes thing with what what Dina Nerds had to say from some of the people from behind the scenes. This is coming from uh, Dempsey Palat that said had a blast with Ant Man the Wasp Quantumania. Paul Rudd has never been better, and Jonathan Majors effortlessly conquers every second of the of screen time he gets. But the real star of the film is Jeff Loveness. Jeff Loveness's script, a reminder of how beautifully strange and mysterious the MCU still is. Uh, now, this is coming from Christian Harloff, obviously Christian Harloff being the YouTuber that he is, said that so Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania goes hard in the paint as the big epic sci-fi film, blending Star Wars, Star Wars, Fifth Element, Dune, plus Strange World. I don't think it's going to work for everyone, but I really dug this tone. It's a bit, it's a bit chaotic towards the end, but wraps it up nicely. Kang rules. Matt Ramos came in and said... Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania is truly episode one of what is sure to be 
a crazy cinematic series. You have to enjoy this movie more as an episode of something greater, uh, greater rather than its own standalone film that concludes a, th- a trilogy. Jonathan Majors is him and uh, is him and is the standout. There are two post-credit scenes, and they will leave you hype. The quantum realm is explored in a way, cre- in a way, in a way, creative way. Uh, Modoc got. Done dirty. The third act picks up the film in a very big way. This is all I can say for now. And obviously, Greg Alba came out and pushed, posted the video that he posted um, and said what he had to say about it. He had said that um, he was mixed. It was a 15 second video of him kind of just staring off into space and said he doesn't really know how to feel. He has mixed feelings, etc., etc. Um, but he said, I, I will agree with this. Jonathan Majors gives a great performance as King the Conqueror. Uh, then we have one from Richard over at the Direct that says, Quantumania takes big swings, hits one of hits hits on most, but not all. Uh, captivating visuals which elevate a fun story, but some stakes were lacking. Kang is here. What an incredible performance from Jonathan Majors. Overall, a solid start to phase five. And I again, we've all said over here. Jonathan Majors was going to become a household name after he after his performance of Kane the Conqueror. Plus, he's doing his what he just did in Devotion. Plus, he's about to come on and create three. I believe there's one more film he's in. Or maybe it's just those three. Correct me if I'm wrong. I believe there's one more film he's in this year outside of Quantumania and Creed. Um, but you know, we all said Jonathan Majors was going to become a household name. And it's seeming like he is just kills it and knocks it out of the park as Kang. This is coming from Courtney Howard, who said, after a frustrating roughed act one, frustratingly roughed act one, hmm, Quantumania finally gets going only to end where this story should have begun. While the eternal stakes are clear and, and weighty, emotional, emotional drive felt slight and levity even lighter. That said, Jonathan Majors rules. And you notice every person has said that. Even with the sprinkled with their negativity, they still make sure they say Jonathan Majors as Kang is awesome. Uh, obviously, E-Man came in and if you saw his review, his video review he put in. But he said, just saw Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. It's so weird and visually felt like a new world. Jonathan Majors as Kang is the best part, period. Wish we got more Wasp. Paul Rudd was hilarious, although other jokes were chuckles at best. Felt just, I felt like just another Ant Man. Now, again, those are things that we are hearing coming from um, people that have gotten to see, gotten to see the review and things like that. Now, this is what, or got, I'm sorry, they've gotten to see the film. They got to see the film last night during the uh, during the world premiere, and we have, we were saying during the world premiere. Obviously, I'll be honest with you, I was not expecting, I wasn't expecting for reviews to come out and be so bleh i was expecting it to be like i honestly maybe maybe it was more of a want at the same time expect i was expecting but also maybe more heavy on the want because i do want marvel to get back i do want to have fun you know with marvel i don't you know when we get up here and we talk about the things that we criticize marvel about it's not that we're criticizing marvel because we hate marvel or we're we're being haters or i've seen that with people saying oh you're just a hater with it with um some of the things you're saying about quantum mania not to me but to other people that have seen it and reviewed it people being called haters well no nobody's being a hater we're just simply giving our opinions over something we love and we all love the mcu and with our love for the mcu we want marvel to get back to that lightning in a bottle magic that they had with the infinity saga and again that comes with making stop making some of the dumb decisions that are being made i.e not recasting t'challa being one the people of color for the fantastic four that your mileage may vary on that um um, some of the stories you're doing, you know, some of the things you're, some of the, some of the crazy wacky things that, that they're deciding to do within the MCU, fans are just not picking up what they're putting down. And it's like, it's not that we hate it. It's just simply that we, we have a love for these, these stories, a love for these characters. And we want to see these characters and stories done right and have, and done with justice on the screen. So, you know, it's, it's never been one of those, it's never been one of those things that I wanted Marvel to fail. I wanted Ant-Man and 
the Wasp Quantumania to knock it out the park. So people could be coming in saying in reviews, Marvel's back. It felt normal. It felt like that lightning in a bottle again. And I can't wait to see what the future of Phase 5 looks like. Again, for me personally, I understand that people have said that what they've had to say about it. I still need to see the film for myself before I can, you know, give wholeheartedly my opinions on everything. But... I'm still looking forward to seeing this, and I hope that a lot of you in the chat are still looking forward to seeing it as well. Now, this is what Josh over at Dinner Nerds had to say. I want to make sure I'm reading this correctly. So Josh over at Dinner Nerds has heard that the, uh, from behind the scenes that the overall consensus of the film is that it's not very good. Now, this is not coming from people on Twitter. This isn't coming from... Like my time to shine, hello, can we get some toast or the watcher or people like that? This is coming from connections that Josh over at Dinner Nerds has with people behind the scenes connected to the film. And they are saying that the film is not very good. And he's also heard that they even hate the film. He's even heard that people behind the scenes don't like the th don't like that the film lacks stakes. Now, if you remember, there was somebody in this review that said, "Uh huh." Richard over the direct said, "But some stakes were lacking," and some people it seems like behind the scenes also echo that sentiment that stakes are lacking. And then he also said, "Um, um." I'm sorry. He also said that he's heard that although Kang, now this one, this one I really didn't like hearing. I didn't like hearing this. I was like, oh fuck, I, bro, I hope not. Although Kang is really cool in the things that we've seen, as far as like you know the clip that we saw that I shared, or that's been going around, or the featurettes that we've been seeing, or the trailers that they've shown. Although Kang is cool and all of that, he's actually really weird and goofy in the movie. And although his performance is incredible, some are saying it doesn't he does not hold up as a character to other Marvel villains. This is what people are saying from behind the scenes. He also went on to say, uh, he was even told that uh, they don't think that Kang is in that the Kang in this film should be the big bad Kang in the next two Avengers films. I'll read that again. They do not think that the Kang in this film in Quantum Mania should be the big bad Kang in the next Avengers films. He's even heard that Modok Modok is so bad in the film that it's just another Ralph Boner and that people are going to be making memes about him for years and years to come. He's even heard that visually the film really doesn't hold up. That quantum mania, that the quantum realm looks fake and weird due to their use of the volume. The same thing that they used when they were filming Thor: Love and Thunder. Uh, he also said, um, however, he stated that the post-credit scenes that we talked about yesterday are absolutely incredible. So, those are some of the things coming out from. Uh, People that have already gotten to see it, people from behind the scenes. If you again, maybe maybe you believe what Josh is saying over at Dinner Nerds. Maybe you don't. I, you know, I'll, I guess I'll say it. Take it with a grain of salt. Josh does have very very credible insiders, very very credible guys that he can go to and ask questions to uh, that can give him answers to some of the things he's wanting to know. Uh, uh, you know, Josh is. I would don't really consider Josh to be a scooper, but he's good at what he does. He's good at what he does, and he does have good inside sources so and i'll just go ahead a little bit and touch back on this again so let's kind of touch back on this one more time uh this is the things from quantum mania that is coming from the marvel studio subreddit just in case you weren't here yesterday or you missed something this is what we discussed yesterday quantum mania they said that modok darren dies after having oh, i'm sorry spoiler warning for anybody that doesn't want to hear anything about the quantum that's what's going on in quantum mania for the post credit scenes the both post credit scenes or anything like that now is your time to exit before i get into these spoilers i'll give about a few seconds here then i'm going to get into the spoilers and what they're saying all right they say excuse me Modoc Darren, dies of having a change of heart because Cassie calls him a dick. Okay. Um, at the end of the film, Kang the Conqueror is potentially killed after being kicked into the ship's multiversal engine by Hope while it's collapsing due to Scott hitting it with pin particles. Cassie rescues Scott and Hope from being stranded in the quantum realm. Scott is happy but begins to have a crisis after remembering that Kang said something bad was coming and that everyone would die if he didn't get out of the quantum realm. 
that is all that's for that now this is the first post credit scene this is the post credit scene now both of these post credit scenes again if you're still in here and you don't want to know this is absolutely true both of these post credit scenes are in the film the first post credit scene says the council of kings gather discussing how the how the king they exiled has been killed the council is led by Amortis and includes rama tut and possibly a version of scarlet centurion i'm smiling already because it's fucking dope my god however they are not red they are not happy that their exiled variant was killed by others and vow to stop them our heroes who have started to meddle in the multiverse as they may kill everything they've built. Interconnected timelines. They call upon other Kangs for support and preparation for the dastardly plan. The scene ends in a coliseum full of Kang variants, including a scroll version. And I love that. I love that. I love that. I love that. Because that was one of my biggest things that I've been saying. We needed to see other versions of Kang. And I still say we need to see Kang taking out versions of the different versions of the Avengers from different timelines, multiverse, whatever. Different different universes. We need to see, we should even be seeing that. And I love that. I think that's super dope. Because that even kind of couples with the rumor that I talked to you guys about la earlier last earlier this week or no, I'm sorry, last week we talked about that. And that was that in Kang Dynasty, this is a rumor, rumor, in Kang Dynasty that it's going to be co comprised of different teams taking on different versions of Kang, like uh, a cosmic team taking on the Scarlet Centurion. We should, we're supposed to be seeing a 616 Illuminati formed by Doctor Strange taking on Immortus, um, uh, uh, the new Avengers team built by Sam Wilson's Captain America taking on the Kang from Quantum, from the, from Quantumania, um, and a young Avengers team taking on it, it didn't say it didn't say uh Iron Lad. It didn't say Iron Lad. It just said a version of Kang. It didn't say Iron Lad. I can, did it say Iron Lad? No, it just said a version of Kang. Um so that that's even coupled with that. So I, I think that that's really cool too. If 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 any of that happens, obviously this post credit scene is happening, but if any of the, the things that I just named happen, that also sounds really cool to me too. Now, this is post credit scene number two. It says, we see a stage and then Victor Timely. Now, I'm sorry, Victor Timely, another Kang variant. As he is making a presentation to the audience, he has his classic mustache and set looks like it is in the 30s or 40s. In the crowd watching Victor on stage is Loki looking terrified and Mobius looking confused. And I love that because it also ties in with the Victor Timely stuff for Loki Season 2. Victor Timely has been rumored to show up in Loki Season 2 for a long time. Long time. I've talked about that with you guys in the past. Victor Timely has, has been rumored to show up and, and even suggest that maybe Victor Timely was even one of the ones involved with the Stark Expo stuff we saw in Captain America, uh, uh, the first Captain America film, uh, the first Avenger, where we saw that. That if you take your, take your mind, take yourself back to the first Captain America film, in Marvel Comics, Victor Timely comes to the year 1901, I believe. I forget, the whole, he names the town Timely something, I forget what he names the town, but he even becomes mayor of the town. And he's there to progress, like, further progress technology and things like that. Well, he in the comics created the first Human Torch that showed up in Marvel Comics. He created the Human Torch, blah, 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 but it was an Android Human Torch and everything like that, blah, blah, blah. Some people have been saying that the synthetic man, maybe Victor Timely created, because instead of the Human Torch at the Stark Expo in the MCU, it's the synthetic man. So maybe Victor Timely created that synthetic man, maybe with Stark's father, um, or I'm sorry, with Tony's father, um, and even the hover car and the whole Expo thing. Maybe Victor Timely was involved with that. So maybe, just, just maybe, just maybe, the point in time that Loki and Mobius find themselves at in Loki season two with Victor Timely could possibly be way back during that entire time, during the first Avengers time. Now, when, what year does the first Avengers take place in? Somebody has to help me with that. Forget what year the first Avengers film takes place in, but just because even if it take, doesn't take place, 
you know, around the time that Victor Timely would have been there, 1901, that still doesn't mean that Victor Timely's presence still could not have been felt later on. Still does not mean that his contrib all his contributions to technology could not have been felt later on in the film. So I, it's it's all interesting. It's all very, very interesting. And I'm I, I have so many thoughts and so many ideas that I really can't wait to see. 19, 1944. Thank you, Gray. 1944 is when that film takes place. Uh, so, um, it, it's, it's, uh, yeah, uh, Connor said it's, or John said it's, uh, confusing. Yeah, it's, it's, it is confusing. That's why we need things to, to be connected. It, that's why I said it sounds very interesting. Although, be it confusing, uh, we still need some things to make sense and connect and everything like that. But, uh, we'll have to wait and see. Um, Yes, yes, Double Tar Victor Timely is being played by Jonathan Major. So from what we've heard, every variant that we see of Kang will be played by Jonathan Majors. Every single one of them uh, will be played. So um, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Uh, but I will show this again from last night because, you know, we did not, because of how choppy the stream was, we really didn't get to uh, to watch this. So let's go ahead and watch this here. This is the featurette that Marvel Studios uh, put out. You come from above. Like him. He will burn the world to find you. Who? The Conqueror. Kang the Conqueror is the new iconic villain in the MCU. We knew we wanted to go to places that we'd never been. And pitting Ant-Man against a major villain felt perfect. Audiences have seen a version of this character in the series Loki. This is wild. In our film, he's very different. Kang is an infinite number of different personas. And you need an actor to be able to pull that off. And that is Jonathan Majors. I can rewrite existence and shatter timelines. Yeah. In this film, this is really a side of him we haven't seen. This is his baddest self. I will take my revenge on those who banished me. And I will burn them out of time. I think the film is ultimately about how time plays within our relationship. Love, friendship, legacy, Ant-Man versus Kang. This is it. People are gonna lose their mind. You know, if you leave, Ant Man. I'm still looking forward to seeing this film. I am still looking forward to seeing this film, despite what people are saying, uh, the, ne the negative things that are coming out about it. I am still looking forward to seeing this film. I'm looking forward to seeing Kang. I'm looking forward to seeing Jonathan Majors. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing those post credit scenes. And the last thing that I will show here is this here. Um, this is Jeff Loveness last night at the red carpet event, kind of just talking about we got Jeff Loveness here with us. Everything. That has made me follow Kane. <laughs> I had to follow Jonathan Majors, the most charismatic man alive. Well, considering the fact that you wrote this movie, we figure you're the person to talk to him, to talk to about him and what you wanted to explore with this character, right? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Jonathan's the best. I cannot wait for you guys to see what he does with Kane the Conqueror. He is this multifaceted villain. As, as the writer on this, like, obviously you want to bring the heat as a villain, which he does, but you also want to make you want to make the villain his own hero and his own story. And I can't say much, but like, Kang's story is just beginning and I cannot wait to see what Jonathan does. Well, I think something you probably can speak to as somebody who's written Marvel comics before oh, yeah. and is coming oh, yeah. here. You guys uh, know. What was it like We're to Marvel. be able to delve into so much of this stuff? I mean, we've got, we've got the Quantum Realm, we've got Freedom Fighters, we've got Kang the Conqueror. Yeah. You, get to, you get to play with a lot of the action figures in this movie. Absolutely. No, I, I grew up reading Marvel comics. They basically taught me how to read X-Men and Spider-Man comics. And like, a guy like Kang has been written so well from everyone from like Stan Lee to Kurt Busiek to Rick Remender. I mean, he has touched every corner of the Marvel Universe and he can go toe to toe with anyone in the Marvel Universe. As you are a lifelong comics fan, yeah. what was it like the day you got the call or the day that you found out that you actually got this assignment? I loved X-Men, I loved Spider-Man. The Marvel world was so huge to me. To 
actually write a movie at this scale, a movie that ho I would have loved if I was eight years old or 33, which I am, I suppose. I'm going to be dead soon. <laughs> but uh, it's a thrill, and I hope you guys love it. I think it's funny and exciting and big. And hey, the movies are back, baby. That's what I have to say. All right. All right. Well, we're both older than you, so thanks, Jeff Loveness. <laughs> Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I just want to show that there because obviously we all know we've, we've talked quite a bit about Jeff Loveness over here. We've talked quite a bit about, um, Jeff Loveness and him writing not just Quantumania, but he's also writing King Dynasty and things like that. So I'm, um, again, I'm still pretty high on this film. I, I do want to see it. Obviously I'll have to wait to give my real review next Friday. It's not just myself. It'll be myself. It'll be Corey. It'll be... I believe Kellen is coming, I think, and Q. We will all be in here, and we will be giving you guys our uh, review for Ant-Man uh, and the Wasp Quantumania next Friday. So, uh, But as always, question is for you guys. Let me know down below in the comments what you guys are thinking about some of the reviews that have come out for Quantumania. What are you thinking about some of the things that Denim Josh over at Denim Nerds had to say that he's heard from behind the scenes over at Marvel Studios, what they think about the film. And what are you thinking about what Jeff Loveness had to say? And just overall, are you still anticipating this film? Are you one of the ones that are saying to yourself, you know, I don't really care what the reviewers are saying. I've got to see it for myself. Or are you one of the ones that goes off of what reviewers think and you're going to wait until this film hits Disney Plus before you view it uh before you have your first time viewing it. So let me know down below in the comments what you guys are all thinking.